Welcome to Neuro Noodles, Neurofeedback, the Neuropsychology Podcast featuring tech legend Jay Gunkelman. He is the man who has read well over a half a million brain scans. Our goal is to provide information and promote options for better mental health. The Neuro Noodle Podcast is supported by listeners and businesses just like you. Like our gold supporter, Applied Neuroscience, and our silver supporter, Mind Media. Earn up to 16 CEU hours by attending Applied Neuroscience's NeuroGuide Workshop March 4th and 5th in Madeira Beach, Florida. It's led by none other than Dr. Robert Thatcher himself. There are two ways you can attend, online or in person, with the link appliedneuroscience.com slash attend hyphen ng hyphen workshops. Mind Media, get the latest EEG and neurofeedback technology from mindmedia.com. Their semi-dry sensor cap is a wonder to see and their EEG amplifiers have been trusted in the field for decades. Their neurofeedback and QEG courses will get you up to speed in no time. Visit mindmedia.com now. Join us at the 7th Annual Super Brain Summit at Bradley University Center for Collaborative Brain Research. It's featuring speaker Dr. Mary Frances O'Connor. She's the author of The Grieving Brain, The Surprising Science of How We Learn from Our Love and Loss. If you want to get more information regarding registration, contact Gwen Hoarter. She's at G-H-O-W-A-R-T-E-R at bradley.edu or call her at 309-677-3900. If you want more information regarding programming, you can contact Dr. Lori Russell Chapin herself at 309-677-3186 or email lar at bradley.edu. I threw a suggestion of uh, Dudley Moore disease out there uh, just because my my old man passed away from it and uh, his brother had Parkinson's and they say none of this stuff is hereditary and you know i'm trying to record as much as i can of my <laughs> existence here because i played football too but uh yeah. is it sup- supra paranucleic palsy is that what it is uh, um in, in in fact uh it, if you look at it it's progressive uh supranuclear Paul nuclear Paul okay and um it, it you know it, it's mistakenly diagnosed as parkinson's or alzheimer's quite often at the beginning yeah uh, be, because this, you know you you've got a palsy uh so you've got the tremor and rigidity uh, like parkinson's and you've got cognitive changes like alzheimer so uh, they're you know they're kind of uh well <laughs> uh, uh this is not easily diagnosed at the start, but eventually it becomes quite obvious. Yeah. And, you know, Parkinson's disease is uh, uh, related to a disturbance in, in a, a chemical uh, alpha uh, uh, synuclein. And the progressive supranuclear palsy is a, a tau pathy. Uh, yeah, tau is a substance, tau, like Alzheimer's and frontotemporal dementia. Well, also progressive uh, uh, supranuclear palsy. Uh, so, uh, um, uh, thus, it's easily confused there. But um, it, it also goes by some other name, you know, <laughs> like everything in medicine. Um, yeah. Yeah. You, know, you, you find it kind of popping up in a couple of different spots. Nuchal dystonia. <laughs> and, uh, and my, you know, my pet peeve about people putting their names on things yeah they put your well, name on it <laughs> uh th- this has three people hyphenated together i guess they had to argue as to who was actually the one who found the syndrome of uh it's richardson steel osluski syndrome palsy now that should give you a freaking palsy <laughs> and, uh, uh it gives uh, it it's it, uh, pisses me off when people start to uh, try and claim these things with their name. Uh, the, the, the describing this as a progressive uh, supranuclear palsy is an accurate description. You don't have to remember who the hell Richardson or Steele or, you know, this is as bad as Gunkelman, Osluski. So, 
um, you know, the, uh, <laughs> but it, so the, this this is it's not an easy initial diagnosis, but eventually the the damage ends up um, mounting to the point where all of its symptoms kind of come together and it differentiates itself. It's not just the rigidity and palsy. Um, you're, you can't use your eyes properly. Um, uh, and well, that's... it's a very slow progressing. It's a slow death. And eventually you can't swallow. From what I remember, you can't yeah. swallow anymore. And then you get the feeding tube and then you get the pneumonia and then that's it. It's, yeah, uh... they, they basically say there's three to five years expectancy uh, from from a full diagnosis, uh, you know, not from the initial uh, uh, stiffness and palsy, but it, it's not as slow as uh, uh, Parkinson's, uh, uh, right. which has a few more years expectancy beyond that. But um, uh, it, it it's um, it, it's not quote hereditary, but. Uh, there, the there's a genetic towards the tau pathology, so uh, but it's not handed down in a family uh, like uh, yeah like some other uh, uh, problems. Now, Jay, uh, you, you bring up tau. What is tau again? Because we talked about a CTE. Uh, yeah, it's uh, a it's a protein, yeah. and and is that where it? If you see that protein. It starts to eat away at the vascular, and then it turns brown and it dies. It's the same thing as CT, or how's yeah, it different? Yeah, and 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 it it also folds, multiple folding, and they're they're trying to figure out uh, what, what the deal is with the different kind of folding. But it, it's it, it's a, a progressive uh, uh, a pathology when tau starts to uh, mount up, and and that then you get the plaque basically, and um. What, uh, what the, the anatomy that's damaged in, in this is essentially starting with the brainstem, uh, which is related to the ability to keep your eyes functioning. Um, and, and obviously, uh, the, the frontal eye fields are associated with this brainstem circuit. And on the way to the frontal lobe, you go through the basal ganglia and the substantia nigra. And the substantia nigra is the commonality with Parkinson's disease, thus the tremor and rigidity. But eventually the frontal lobes are fully involved here as well, and you get personality changes. And, you know, most of the time, personality changes aren't necessarily for the better. You know, yeah, uh, yeah. I, I could think of a few personalities that I'd like to see change, <laughs> but this is not the kind of change, I mean, that. Nobody comes saying, you know, uh, Uncle Ralph is, is 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 now nicer. You know, the uh, the personality changes are uh, and and uh, impulsive uh, decisions and crazy purchases and you know the the when the frontal lobes are gone, uh, uh, judgment and um, uh, rational judgment and uh, impulse control are are shot as well. The tremor and rigidity. Uh, it, it, uh, when you're you're standing up, this is axial rigidity, and um, in, uh, in in uh, progressive supranuclear palsy, the axial rigidity they lean back, and in Parkinson's disease they, they lean forward, uh, and in actually the axial rigidity leaning backwards, they basically have to use a walker that's a weighted walker. Because as they start to fall backwards, they've got to be able to pull themselves forward with it. Not too many walkers would, you know, give you something to grab onto and pull forward. So they have walkers that have a substantial weight in the front of them. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, and the, you know, obviously they, they recommend shoes without heels. And, and their uh, uh, difficulty with actual rigidity. Uh, and again, that somewhat differentiates. The, the forward-leaning Parkinson's disease from the backward-leaning acute rigidity when you see it here. Swallowing becomes difficult, uh, and eye movements are, are obvious. Uh, that's not such a common presentation in Parkinsonism until the very end. Uh, uh, so 
uh, it usually uh, when eye movements start to become really problematic, uh, um, uh, the, uh, the, the, this is uh, the thing that usually uh, flags the doctor who's trying to figure out what it is uh, that, that this is what it is. But it doesn't mean that they can do anything about it. It's, there's no right. treatment as such. Uh, levodopa, which is you know effective in Parkinson's disease, totally ineffective. Uh, well, there, there's some people that report an initial benefit, but that's like any uh, uh, any uh, sort of placebo effect. You have an initial positive response and it goes away. Um, but the uh, so levodopa is not really it, this is not just a movement disorder. You know you. The brainstem, the frontal lobes. I mean, it, this is more than just a substantia nigra going bad like Parkinson's. If you're doing an EEG, I, I know you can't tell CTE from a EEG, but you can see a, a groupings of possibilities. If you had an EEG, where would you see the problem starting in the temple again, or what? What do you think? And in, in, in this case, you'd probably see the difficulty as you see it in the uh, Parkinson's disease uh, because the initial uh, uh, issue with that. And that's, that's basically seen frontal, uh, uh, frontal central, the frontal lobe, the basal ganglia uh, regulate the motor strip. And um, uh, that, that, that's where you'd end up okay. uh, seeing that uh, aspect of it. And then obviously the personality change ends up being frontal as well. Uh, so we, we expect quite a bit of change up front. Yeah. And um, uh, frontotemporal dementia um, uh, uh, ends up with substantial uh, frontal uh, uh, change as well. Uh, Parkinson's disease has a, a, a less pronounced uh, change uh, than frontotemporal dementia does. So, so Parkinson's and supranucleic parent, I never say it right. Progressive. Supra, supranuclear palsy. So it's related to Parkinson's. Is it related to any other types no, of brain disease? No, it's not related to Parkinson's. And and it, uh, uh, it, uh. that's that's hard. Uh, when you get to the literature, you're going to see it referred to as a Parkinsonian uh, uh, dementia. But then they go on to say that it's not Parkinson's, and it's related yeah. to tau pathology, which is more related to Alzheimer's and frontotemporal dementia than it is to, to Parkinson's. Again. Uh, uh, alpha synuclein versus tau, totally different uh, substances and different brain areas involved. The commonality is that the substantia nigra ends up being problematic in both, and that's you know common symptom: the 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 uh, motor rigidity and tremor. Is there anything you can do to train to help the symptoms of this? Uh, I would imagine early on, maybe you got you could do something, but later on, forget about it. Um. You know, I, I would be the last one to say, you know, forget about it. Uh, yeah, um, right, 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 right. Uh, the, you know, <laughs> you know, uh, 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 do what you can, but there, there's no known treatment. Um, uh, uh, like any uh, progressive uh, dementia, there are people trying uh, stimulation technologies that seem to have some. Uh, effect we'll see across time uh, how all the uh, you know larger control studies sort of uh, pan out but at, at this point there are uh, stimulation uh, uh, photobiomodulation uh, um, uh, that seems to be being used for alzheimer's um, and, and you know there, there's there's some uh, small n uh, uh, short run studies uh, that show that they can maintain uh, their level of function, um, you know, uh, uh, where, where the uh, non-treatment control uh, uh, group continues to progress. Um, uh, but, you know, so the, you know, there, there's some things you can try, but it's not like there's something specific. Yeah. Earn up to 16 CEU hours by attending Applied Neurosciences NeuroGuide Workshop March 4th and 5th in Madeira Beach, Florida. It's led by none other than Dr. Robert Thatcher himself. There are two ways you can attend, online or in person, with the link appliedneuroscience.com slash attend hyphen ng hyphen workshops. 
Join us at the 7th Annual Super Brain Summit at Bradley University Center for Collaborative Brain Research. It's featuring speaker Dr. Mary Frances O'Connor. She's the author of The Grieving Brain, The Surprising Science of How We Learn from Our Love and Loss. If you want to get more information regarding registration, contact Gwen Hoarter. She's at G-H-O-W-A-R-T-E-R at bradley.edu or call her at 309 677 3900. If you want more information regarding programming, you can contact Dr. Lori Russell Chapin herself at 309 677 3186 or email lar at bradley.edu. There's some evidence, it, it's spotty evidence, but it, it's um, uh, uh, environmental clusters uh, that have worked with a TCE or other s- uh, solvents. Um, that uh, the, this this palsy may end up having a trigger, um, you know, a, a chemical trigger that kind of turns on the tau pathology, and um, uh, the, there's a fairly strong uh, uh, link between TCE and Parkinson's, uh, but they they believe also um, the progressive uh, supranuclear palsy uh, may have a a similar um, uh, kind of a, a, a connection or trigger. Jay, what is TCE? Uh, uh, Trichloroethylene. Uh, they used to use it in as a solvent. Uh, <laughs> actually, there, some people actually used it at home as, as a cleaning solvent to clean things, and uh, 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 the, uh, the, the, which you know you don't get it from a store to do that, but you might have gotten it from from work as a as a solvent and you, you uh yeah. and anyway the uh um electronic manufacturing used it as a degreaser uh on on their chips and stuff for a long time now they have water-based uh, uh degreaser and um yeah uh, uh, save themselves the toxicity and the exposure to workers as well uh, but uh, tce um it, it it can evaporate if it's in the liquid, but if it's if it's in the soil, it can uh, last a long time. And there are uh, sites where uh, uh, TCE is uh, buried at depth, and they try to cap it. Um, but uh, the difficulty now is uh, in the San Francisco Bay Area, for instance. Uh, AstraZeneca uh, had a site where uh, they uh, produced. Uh, chemicals and uh, uh, the the toxicity that's buried there is is capped, and now they wanted to build homes on top of it. Yeah, but uh, um, the, the, the uh, that 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 was almost pushed through. Uh, it was I, I think stopped fairly effectively now. Uh, uh, sea level rise brings up groundwater, and all, all of the contaminants that would end up having uh, come up underneath all the homes initially they were saying that they wouldn't it would only have parking on the ground level and be homes above but their designs change across time so so my dad and uncle they're they're from eastern uh, europe uh, latvia so you know you had the russians germans coming in wartime they could have been uh subject to I, and we're speculating right crystal ball but there was no environmental protection agency over there. I don't think there is one now. No. Well, but, uh, goodness, that, our, that... our, our, our uh, soldiers had burn pits, you know, so. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, La- and, latrines, yeah. Well, uh, in, in fact, uh, uh, Biden's son who died of uh, 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 brain cancer ended up having exposure to chemical burn pits as well. Uh, life is hazardous to life, you know. Uh, uh, so a burn uh, pit is like you you pour gasoline on something yeah, and you burn it and then you get the fumes yeah, from and, it and, it and they they were dumping chemicals in to dispose of the chemicals and just essentially you know burning them. Isn't that what happened in uh, in, the, uh, uh, in Ohio here? No, they deliberately lit it in yeah, order okay, to dispose it. of it. Yeah, uh, that, that there was no way to uh, to really handle it. And you know uh, the 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 rail uh, uh, regulatory system was taken apart uh, under Trump, uh, who was really big on 
taking apart regulatory uh, uh, things. So the number of people on a train, uh, how yeah. long the trains could be, the safety levels, uh, um, all, all that uh, ended up. The, 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 the uh, uh, vinyl uh, chloride uh, basically had uh, its the train cars listed as non-hazardous. So if if you're if you have a a train with enough hazardous material on it, there's there are specific regulations about how long it can be and uh, uh, what kind of staffing has to be on it and everything. But this was a multiple mile long train with a person in the engine, uh, nobody at the back seeing the sparks flying out as the as the the carriage was falling apart on a car that ended up derailing them. So. Jay, the uh, progression of PSP, I'm just, I'm just going to call it that because I'm going to have to edit myself every two seconds. <laughs> uh, what, if you had a guess, like how, how would it start if it's a five-year disease? In my case, what I saw was more like an eight to 10. It's How does it start and how does it progress through? And as it progresses through, what can you do to use EEG or neurofeedback to try to help some of the symptoms as you're going along this path? Well, tau as a, a protein en ends up having uh, 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 more of it, and again, it, uh, the the folding patterns of it end up uh, uh, causing further problems. So, the progression is more tau and more folding, and um, uh, unfortunately, it it appears uh, irreversible in these uh, circumstances. Um, and, and it, it isn't like there, uh, the, you know, the treatment, well, get a walker with weights on the front and, uh, put in a feeding tube fairly early, uh, so that you don't end up, uh, you know, rest, in, inhaling your food because you can't swallow and end up with uh, pneumonia. Uh, just, you know, just, uh, adapting to the pathology best you can, but it's not like there's a treatment treatment. Yeah. So does it start in one place or it just depends? Well, brain stem on up. Yeah. So back to front? Uh, well, brain stem, uh, uh, as you follow the brain stem up, you get to the uh, basal forebrain, uh, which includes the uh, substantia nigra and other nuclear bodies that are involved in this, and, and then the frontal lobe itself, where the personality change happens. So... Uh, um, so I remember frontal... speech speech came into it you could tell like with Parkinson's there's not as much of a st speech problem as I noticed with PSP yeah well it's, 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 um, Parkinson's is fairly limited to the substantia nigra and it's it's not um, it, it's not something that takes over the speech areas on the dorsal lateral frontal area it's, it's, it's in a in a, a basal forebrain nuclear body. And it's bad enough, you know? Yeah. Um, and you don't that, want to get it. No. Um, and, it, you know, it, it, it finds enough uh, people the way it is. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Unfortunately, uh, uh, Dr. Sturman uh, uh, ends up having a, a fairly advanced uh, Parkinson's at this point and is is uh, not not uh, doing well enough to get out uh, to meetings yeah. anymore and um, uh, I, I feel badly about that you know but, but at least with Parkinson's you can do some type of stimulation right to improve what's going on where do you, where does the stimulation go in um, in fact in Parkinson's they can uh, put in a, a a stimulator in the subthalamus and uh, that can end up turning off the tremor. It doesn't necessarily stop the progression of the disease, but it allows you to uh, move um, uh, appropriately again uh, for a substantial period of time. It's a, it, it's a good use of a, of a stimulator. How would you compare it to like a pacemaker? Well, it's, an, it's not a pacemaker, uh, but uh, uh, what what you what you have is a thalamocortical dysrhythmia, 
And if the lima cortical dysrhythmia is essentially a decreased input to an area, and uh, what they've done is essentially put in an, an artificial input. Uh, you, <laughs> uh, um, uh, it, if you, it, it, it's essentially uh, um, a neuroplasticity gone awry. Um, if you, huh. if you, if you, ha if you lose an arm, uh, the the arm uh, may may end up having phantom pain, and phantom pain is essentially the 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 uh, let's uh, um, yeah, Jay. Which, what is phantom pain? So uh, you you've got a uh, little little Johnny here uh, who who's got an arm on one side, but on on this side he's got a stump. And uh, basically, in, in, in the brain, uh, you, you've got a homunculus uh, that goes from the top of your head and inside the fissure, you've got your feet and toes and your butt and, and lower back. You've got a big area attributed to the hand and you've got a big area uh, associated with the face. You've got the the tongue, and then it goes into the sylvian fissure, all this, all the inside of your mouth, and the smooth muscles all the way through your elementary tractor and there. So what you've lost is essentially uh, uh, the the hand and arm area, and the thalamus deep in the brain that is sending information up to there, because there's no, you know, there's nothing coming in. This that this column doesn't stimulate the cortex anymore here. And when the cortex isn't getting a signal, uh, the alpha on that column slows. And instead of having it a, well, let's say 10 hertz alpha, some, you know, Goldilocks frequency, you know, a 10 hertz alpha slows down to about six. And it's outside of the normal alpha band. But when it slows to that extent, it turns off the lateral inhibition and the area surrounding it can invade, and what you see is a ring of gamma surround that gamma that's on permanently on. It doesn't chirp on and off like normal gamma, and that's the surrounding area invading. So at that point, if you touch the face on little Johnny over here, you may actually misperceive that as some stimulus in the arm because this area has invaded, and let's say we're not talking about phantom pain um, and um, let's say we've got a cochlea in your ear. The big fat end of the cochlea is low frequencies and the little tiny skinny end of it is high frequencies. And all of that uh, uh, low frequency and high frequency goes into the medial geniculate and the thalamus and that sends it up to the auditory cortex. And the low frequencies are fine, but you know, little Johnny went to too many rock concerts and uh, he was shooting guns with no hearing protection. And, you know, he's riding motorcycles and wind in, the, in his ears. And over time, his high frequencies just weren't there anymore. So on the cortex, the high frequencies here don't get an input. And other things surrounding it invade. So little Johnny has tinnitus. And it's the same mechanism, a thalamocortical dysrhythmia, a thalamocortical column that's not doing enough input. The surrounding cortex takes over. And you can see that again as a, a slowed alpha peak with a gamma in the surround. And that's basically the same thing that you end up seeing in the motor strip area for Parkinson's disease or movement disorders like a central tremor and these palsies. So uh, it, it, different locations. Uh, you also see it in reward deficiency syndrome, which is like eating disorders, addiction, uh, some depression uh, at the anterior cingulate. So uh, the thalamocortical dysrhythmia is a foundational basic failure mode in the brain 
that can be a failure in different networks. Depending upon the network, you end up with a different symptom. But it's a it's a it's a it's a simple fix. You um, lost your high frequency hearing. Well, you might be able to put a hearing aid in and replace it. In which case, the input's back and it kicks the other stuff out. So you, can, you with a hearing aid, you might be able to turn off your tinnitus if you get it early enough. Um, uh, uh, phantom pain, uh, it's not like you're going to get a new arm, uh, you, you, but you can learn to uh, live with it. And uh, some people end up having an implant that can turn off the pain. Uh, Dirk uh, Duritter puts in an implant that turns off tinnitus. Um, in, instead of having this column stimulate the area, you can put an electrode on top of this and stimulate from the top. Uh, and an implant uh, uh, put into the temporal area on the auto auditory cortex basically can turn off a tinnitus uh, with the electrical stimulation. Uh, and yeah, it's it's entirely possible to do that. Uh, they do it obviously deeper in the brain for Parkinsonism. It's not a simple surface uh, a spot like the auditory cortex is. Um, you got to get down down in in order to get a uh, get to it. But the subthalamic nucleus is uh, e easily uh, done. And nowadays they actually have uh, uh, advanced uh, uh, implants that have uh, the ability to record the underlying EEG that's going on there as well. And uh, Pro progressive dementia, I mean, the little fragments of you that still hang around, you know, and uh, it's, but uh, quality of life. Yeah, you, yeah, yeah. You're hanging around for somebody else, not for yourself, you know. So, and Lewy body, which looks like Parkinson's quite often at the beginning, uh, at, uh, except the hallucinations and delusions yeah, and stuff yeah. are much more active than uh, people that end up having that, and then they get a bit better, and they realize they're going to go back again. That, that Ro uh, Robin Williams. Robin anybody Williams. else? Anybody else with that particular oh, it's, disease? It's, uh, it, it's not an uncommon choice for people that have it to end up doing okay. suicide. Uh, so, yeah, yeah, so. yeah. Well, Jay Gunkelman, thank you for uh, for another great neuro noodle neurofeedback podcast, my friend. The Neuro Noodle Podcast is supported by listeners and businesses just like you, like our gold supporter, Applied Neuroscience, and our silver supporter, My Media. Earn up to 16 CEU hours by attending Applied Neuroscience's NeuroGuide Workshop March 4th and 5th in Madeira Beach, Florida. It's led by none other than Dr. Robert Thatcher himself. There are two ways you can attend, online or in person, with the link AppliedNeuroscience.com slash attend hyphen ng hyphen workshops. Mind Media, get the latest EEG and neurofeedback technology from mindmedia.com. Their semi dry sensor cap is a wonder to see, and their EEG amplifiers have been trusted in the field for decades. Their neurofeedback and QEG courses will get you up to speed in no time. Visit mindmedia.com now. Join us at the 7th Annual Super Brain Summit at Bradley University Center for Collaborative Brain Research. It's featuring speaker Dr. Mary Frances O'Connor. She's the author of The Grieving Brain, The Surprising Science of How We Learn from Our Love and Loss. If you want to get more information regarding registration, contact Gwen Hoarter. She's at G-H-O-W-A-R-T-E-R -E at bradley.edu or call her at 309-677-3900. If you want more information regarding programming, you can contact Dr. Lori Russell Chapin herself at 309 677 3186 or email lar at bradley.edu.